Based on a few requests, we are building a CRM, Customer Relationship Management Tool in Obsidian. This is a step-by-step -step guide starting with an empty vault. Let's do it. Let me start with the end result. This is what we are going to build and what you can download via the link in the description if you want to save your valuable time. We will create a system that allows us to manage accounts or companies, contacts, the people related to these companies, opportunities to keep track of ways we can make money by selling things to these companies, interactions, which are activities like meetings or calls that we do with these people and want to keep track of, and products, the items or services we offer to our clients. Additionally, we will create a dashboard that shows us some of the most relevant information at one glance, including a pipeline of our open opportunities and their respective value. So let's see how we can set this up. You will not be surprised to hear that we need quite a few things to make this work. We will start with a new and empty vault. This is what I used. So I just go here to my vault, say create a new one. I will call this one Lean CRM and put it into a location and click on create. Okay, so we can delete this welcome node. Okay, so here is what I used to create this CRM. In terms of appearance, I used a minimal theme. So I go to the Obsidian settings, appearance, click on manage themes, search for a minimal, install it, and we have our minimal theme active. Excellent. And then we need a few CSS snippets. I already prepared those snippets for this demo, but you can download them via the link in the description. To use them, once again, we go to the appearance, scroll down to CSS snippets, click on the little folder icon, and then just paste the CSS files in here. We will see later what all these snippets do. We can minimize the folder, then we just refresh the list here in Obsidian and activate all these snippets. Next, let's build the folder structure. As always in my vaults, I will have one folder called 90 organize in the root directory. We will use this to keep our templates, lookups, classes, etc. Basically anything and everything that is not actual content. Inside of organize, I create a, another folder called classes, another one for lookups, and we need something for templates. And under classes, I will add another subfolder called CRM. Strictly speaking, this wouldn't be necessary here, but assuming that I would like to merge the CRM vault with my existing one, I think it's nice to have it separate. The only other folder in the root directory that we need is called CRM. And in there, we also create a few subfolders for our CRM structure. We are going to have accounts. We will have contacts. Then we are going to add interactions, opportunities, and last not least, one folder for products. Now that we have this structure, we also need a few community plugins to provide all the functionality. To install those, we first need to go back to Obsidian settings, community plugins, and turn on community plugins. Then we click on browse, and we search for these plugins. First, buttons, install them, and enable it. The next one we're going to need is the code block enhancer. Strictly speaking, that's not so necessary, but it simply makes it easier to work with the different queries and see the code a bit nicer. Again, we enable it. I will go through all the remaining plugins a bit quickly. The process is always the same. We just search for it, like for data view, enable it. Then we have syntax highlight, very important, the metadata menu plugin. A quick add plugin for convenience of use, as we're going to see a bit later. Then we need the style settings. Again, not technically or functionally necessary, but good to customize our theme and appearance. Very important for functionality is the templater plugin. If you don't know all these plugins or have not worked with them before, don't worry. This video contains all the configuration, all the settings, and the step by step instruction for this specific purpose. The last plugin I like to use is update time on edit. Now we need to configure a few settings. First, we go to the data view settings and enable JavaScript queries and inline JavaScript queries. Also, do not change the default values under code block settings. The queries are using those. 
Next, we go to the metadata menu settings. Under global settings, we make sure the autocomplete feature is turned off and auto calculation is turned on. Under file class settings, we add the folder 90 organized classes as our class file path. Don't forget to hit the little save icon here. I also changed the file class field alias to class instead of file class, but that's just a personal preference rather than an actual requirement. After that, we move to the template settings. Here we define the folder location of our templates, 90 organized templates, as we created it earlier. The last plugin configuration for now is the update time on edit plugin. Here we need to add our organized folder as an exception. So I don't want the plugin to update the metadata inside the organized folder because this would mess up our templates later on. And this is it for the plugins for the moment. The next thing to prepare here are some lookup nodes. We will need those when we create the file classes for each entity. So I go to my organized folder under lookups, which is currently empty, and create a new node. Inside the node, I add one value per line. As you probably guessed, these values will later be available to pick from a list. Next, we have account types. So I create another node, call it account types. And once again, I add the respective values. In my example, I have only three different types for now, customer, partner, and supplier. But as always, you can modify this list as you need. Okay, I will accelerate the video here while I am creating the remaining lookup nodes. The process is always the same. I will add one for countries to make sure country names are consistent across our nodes. Interaction types is a list of activities we want to track, such as calls or meetings. Opportunity phases helps us to keep track of an opportunity's progress throughout the sales cycle. Opportunity probabilities are needed to calculate the value of our sales pipeline. And product types is used to categorize our products and services. Now we should have everything we need to create our CRM system. Next, we will take a look at the required file classes. This section is all about creating file classes for managing the front matter fields and values for all our entities. We do this by using the Metadata Menu plugin. If you're not familiar with it, I recently created a detailed step-by-step -step guide including practical examples. As always, the link to this video is also in the description. Once again, we go back to our organized folder, this time under classes, and click on the little plus icon. The first file class I want to create is for our entity account. For accounts, I want to keep track of the following information. Tags, a normal input field, which our template is going to fill automatically. Address, this is an object that accepts additional values as fields. So here we need to pick an object, accepting values as fields. Then the fields that we want to have as part of this address object are country. And here we have the first select field, allowing us to pick a single value from a list. The source for this list is our previously created lookup node, countries. So we said already it's a select field, then we say values source type is a node, and then we simply need to find the lo node lookups countries. The important thing here now is that we said country shall be part of the object field address, which means we have to select the parent field here, the address, and then we save this field and we can see that it is indeed part of the address object. All right, what else I want to be in there is the city. This is a normal text field. Once again, it should be part of the address. Then I want to have the zip code. This is going to be again an input field belonging to address object. And then I want to have the street belonging to the address. And again, being an input or text field. Then we add another field as an input field for the URL. So the company's website, basically. Next is a select field for the company size. I will just call it size here. We say this is a select field where we can select a single value from a list. And once again, we will take values from a node. And you guessed it probably, in this case, we take the node lookups account sizes. My next field is called industry. And this is just a normal text field, so nothing special to do here. Then we have type, which will again be a select field with a single value from a specific node. And the node is called account types under lookups. So two more fields to go. I want a yes, no or a Boolean field called active. The reason why I want this field is so that I can exclude inactive items or accounts from my reports and queries later on. And the last one is another input field called account, where we keep track of the actual account name. One more thing we want to do here before we move on is to take a look at the file class settings. First, I would like to have a different icon here, not a package, but building. Then 
I want to associate this file class with all the nodes belonging to a specific path. So I want to say that Obsidian should apply this class automatically to all the nodes that are created or stored under CRM accounts. And with this, we have our first class. I just move it into the CRM folder under classes and we are good. Moving on to our contact class. Here we again have several fields as always, and you will see this again and again for all the classes, we will have our tags. I also want to add here the country field, which once again is a select field based on the country lookup node. Then for the first time we have a date field. In this case, it's the birthday of the respective contact. So I select here a date field. You can change the format if you like, but default it will simply take the obsidian settings. We accept this. Then I want to have a yes, no field or a Boolean field to identify whether this contact is the main contact at the respective account to which it belongs. So it's once again a Boolean field. Then we have again the field of account, but contrary to before where account was an input field or a text field, this time it's going to be a select field. So the idea is that each contact belongs to exactly one account and that this account already exists in our system. So I make it a select field, but this time we don't accept values from a specific node, but values returned from a data view query. This query searches for all the nodes in the folder CRM accounts where the active field is true and then returns the list of these names to our field. And from this list, we can then select a specific value. Then we have two more fields. I also want to have an active field on the contact level, not just on the account level, which is of course a Boolean one. And last but not least, a text field for the contact name. Now we just need to take another look at the file class settings here as well. First, we change the button icon. This shall be user. And then once again, we associate the class with a specific path. In this case, it is CRM contacts, of course. If this changes and move it also into the CRM folder. Now for maintaining the metadata of our interactions class, we need a few fields. We need tags, as always an input field, which will be filled by the template. Then we have activity. This is a single value select field based on the lookup node interaction types. So lookup node, interaction types. Basically, I just want to identify it, whether it was a phone call or a meeting, whatever we have in this lookup node. Then we add a field called opportunities. I call it opportunities because we allow one interaction to be part of multiple opportunities. Now the opportunities will be a select field allowing multiple values. So that's the first time we have this setup and the values we want to have in our list will once again come from a query. Looks very similar to the one we had before, but in this case, of course, we're looking for nodes in the opportunities folder rather than in the contacts folder or accounts folder. Then we have two more things. We have one called contacts to keep track of which contacts were involved in this specific activity with whom did I have the meeting or the phone call. So this is again, the same setup as with the opportunities, a multi value select field based on a data view query. And then our last field here is account. And you will not be surprised to hear that this is once again, a select field, but this time with a single value from a list based on the query for accounts. All right, this covers interactions. Ah, not quite. I still need to change the settings of the file class, of course, I forgot. Instead of package, we want to have activity. And once again, we map this to a file path, in this case, CRM interactions and save. We can move on to the next class, which is of course for opportunities. Okay, let's do the file class settings first, so I don't forget. A new icon and a mapping to the path, opportunities. Okay, and then we do the file class field. We meet an old acquaintance here, which is the text field. Then we need to add a field called products, which will be a multi-value select field based on a data view query, which is this one. Again, getting all the entries from the products folder. Then we can add a single value field based on the contacts node to identify the decision maker. So we want to have a select single value based on data view query. And this one is for contacts. This is it. Okay. Then we add a field called contacts, which is a multi value field. Once again, based on the contacts nodes in our folder coming from this query. Then we have a date field, which is our close date. 
The idea here is to get an overview of when we expect to close a certain opportunity or once it is closed, at which date it was closed actually. So this would be a date field. Then we have something called weighted value. And this is a formula field. We did not have this before, but a formula field allows us to do simple calculations with other fields in our file class. Okay, this formula will take the field value, which does not exist yet, multiply it with the field probability, which also does not exist yet, but we are going to create them in a moment, and divide the result by 100, giving us the so-called weighted value. Talking about probability, this is already the next field we are going to create, and it's going to be a single value select field based on a node, and this is where we have the all probabilities lookup node coming into play. Then we have a, another field called value. So this is the total possible value of the opportunity. If we win it, this is how much revenue we're going to create. This needs to be a number, otherwise we cannot use it in calculations. Then we have another single value select field called face, single select, based on a lookup node called opportunity faces. Then we have the field account, because we want to know what the relation is from each opportunity to a specific account. This needs to be a single select based on a data view query. And the data view query we want to use here is the one that returns the account list based on our nodes in the folder. And then the last one is a text field, which is basically the opportunity name. All right, and this is it for opportunities. Move in the CRM folder and we are almost complete. We need just one more class, which is product. For product, I actually can live with the package icon here, but I still need to link it to the product path to make sure it gets associated with all the nodes in there. And then we can take a look at the file class fields for products. As always, we have tags. Then we have something that I call unit profit, and this should be a formula. And this formula simply takes the field unit price, deducts from it the unit cost, and then gives me a result. Oh, one important thing, which I think I forgot before, we need to Check here this auto update this field to make sure it gets calculated automatically whenever there is a change. We also need the field unit price that we just mentioned. That's of course a number field and we need the unit cost. So basically how much does it cost us to create and sell a specific unit to our customers? Again, a number field. Then we have product type. This should be a single select list value from a specific node and we take the lookup node product types. Then we have a yes, no field called active. You already know why, because we want to use this later in queries. And last not least, we have an input field called product, where we put the product's name when we create the node. And that's it for our file classes. We now have file classes defined for the five entity types we plan to use, lookup nodes created for the values we need in the various select fields, and a folder structure for our nodes. Next, let's take a look at templates. We are going to create six templates one for each of our entities and one for meeting nodes. I will show the creation of the account template and the meeting template in detail. The templates for the other entities follow the same principles as the account template. I create a new node in our templates folder and call it account. The first part of the template is a short bit of template script. All this does is to prompt for a title whenever a new node based on this template is created. This is not necessarily a must, but I find it very convenient and useful. So I use this block in all the templates here. Next, we add the front matter fields. These shall match the fields we defined for the respective file class. So for accounts, we add class. Here we also provide a default value, in this case, CRM slash account. Of course, this value needs to be adapted in each entity template to match the corresponding class. In the contact template, for example, this would be CRM slash contact. Under account, I also use a bit of template as help to fill this value automatically with whatever title we gave the node. Then we have active. I think it's safe to set this to true by default whenever we create a new account. Remember, we use this to identify which accounts are still relevant for us and which are not. Then we have type, industry, size, URL. They all remain empty and need to be filled manually. Address is a bit special. Remember, this is an object comprising the values for street, zip code, city, and country. We arrange all these fields to be indented under address to make sure that Obsidian understands this relationship. Aliases are not really necessary, but I like to have them for convenience. And tags is our last field in the template. And here we define two tags by default, CRM and account. Again, this will be adapted depending on the entity. For the contact template, it would be the tags CRM 
and contact. For opportunity, it would be CRM and opportunity and so on. After that, we just close the front meta section with three dashes. Now for the notes content. Let me open the template again, put it side by side and switch to reading view so we can see what effect the changes we do have on the actual template. First, we use Templator to insert the note title as a heading. We can do this with a very short snippet here. We open the Templator code and insert template title and we close it again. This is optional, of course. Then there are a few things that I would like to see for each account that you can easily get with some simple data view queries. First, I want to see a list of all contacts that belong to the account. So I just add a level two heading called contacts. And then I will take my data view query, paste it in here. In this case, I want a table where the link to the respective contact node is displayed in the first column called name. I also want to know the contact's role and email, whether it is the main contact and if it is still active. You will remember that we have all this information in the front meta of our contact nodes based on the previously defined file class and template. You will also see that I use the choice function to display a check mark or a little cross instead of the true and false values I would get otherwise. Since we're only interested in contacts, we define the path CRM slash contacts as the source for our results. So far, this will give me a list of all the contacts in my contacts folder. This is nice, but not particularly useful. So we will limit the results to contacts related to the respective account. We can do this with a WHERE clause, comparing the front meta field account in the contact nodes with the value in the account field of the current node. And because I will use the same query in the contact template, I add another condition to exclude the current file from the results. All that remains now is to sort the results by their name in ascending order, that means from A to C. Now, this being a CRM system, kind of, we are naturally interested in knowing what opportunities we have with each account. And because we hope that there will be many, we will list them in three different sections. Open, one, and lost. Let's start with the open opportunities. As before, this is a data view code block. This time we want a table with the opportunities name, phase, products, total value, probability, and weighted value. All this information is again coming from the opportunity nodes front meta. Then we tell the query to only search inside the CRM slash opportunities folder, only show those that are related to the current account, and where the face field does not contain the string closed. We sort the results by the opportunity name and are good to go. Now I will add the same query to the one and lost sections with two changes. First, I will remove the face, probability and weighted value columns. And second, I change the condition to make sure I only get results where the face field contains the string won or lost respectively. Of course, we don't just want to know our opportunities, but also what we are actually doing to win them. So we add another section called interactions. Not surprisingly, we insert another data view query. This one gives us a table with the interaction name, the activity type, the name of the related opportunity, and the date of the interaction. To do so, we look for nodes in the folder CRM interactions that are related to the current account and sort them by date descendingly, so we have the latest interaction on top of the list. I also add a limit of 10 entries to this query. Like so many things in this example, this is optional and customizable. The basic idea is to have the most recent interactions listed without creating a list with hundreds of entries. The last section in our account template is about the revenue we created or lost with the respective account. Here, I calculate the total revenue per opportunity phase. So I will add a section called lifetime revenue with subheadings for open, one, and lost. This time, we use dataview.js to get these numbers. So we open a code block and paste the query in here. These queries simply look for the value field in all opportunity nodes related to the current account and matching the respective phase and add those numbers up. If you don't know dataview.js, that's totally fine. You can simply copy these queries and adapt the parts that need adapting. If we compare the query for open and one revenue, we can see that we only had to replace closed with one and change the condition from do not include, indicated by this exclamation mark, to do include without the exclamation mark. Now let me also get the query for lost revenues for each account, code block, paste, and there we go. And that's it for the account template, at least for now. 
We will come back a bit later to make it more functional and a bit prettier. The templates for the other entities like contact or opportunity follow the exact same principle. You can easily download this dedicated CRM vault via the link in the description to see the details and save a ton of time compared to building it from scratch. The meeting template is simpler. Again, we have the templater block asking for a title at node generation. Then we have some front matter fields matching the field definitions in the interaction file class. We use the template to automatically add the text CRM and meeting to the node. For the node content, I prepared three information blocks. Logistics, including the meeting date, time and location. Participants to list all attendees. If you have them already created as contacts, you can link to the contact nodes from here directly. And agenda, for listing the topics to be discussed. Below that is space for nodes and action items. I usually separate those into my own and others. At the end, we can add a short data view query. This query will return all the open tasks in any node related to the respective account based on the account field in the node's front matter, and then groups them by the node's name. Basically, this is an easy way to keep track of tasks that were defined in previous meeting nodes for the same account. Now we have the necessary pieces in place and can start adding content. For example, by creating a new account. We go to Obsidian, we can say create new node, and then via the shortcut Ctrl and P, use the command Templater Open Insert Template Model. Select the account template, enter a name and can start adding information. But there are a few things I don't like. First, the account field in our front matter has the value untitled instead of the node title. And second, the node is created in our vault's root directory instead of the CRM slash accounts folder. Of course, we can fix all this manually, but I think we can do better. Let me show you how to set this up. We go to Obsidian settings, click on quick add in the list of community plugins. First, we make sure that the template folder path is correctly set to 90 organize slash templates. Next, we create a multi entry. This is basically a container holding multiple quick add commands or actions. I will call it new CRM entity. Then we add a template entry called new CRM account. Click on the gear icon to open a configuration. In here, we tell quick add which template to use when creating a node with this action. In our case, it's the account template. We don't care about the file name format and file name in this case, but we will define a target folder under create in folder, setting this to CRM slash accounts. We leave the other options unchanged except for the last one, where I like to define that the new node shall be opened in preview mode and in a new vertical split. With that done, we can click out of the configuration for this action. We use the little handle at the right to move this entry inside the multi-container. Now we can duplicate the new CRM account action and adapt it for contact, opportunity and product. For each copy, click on the gear icon to enter its configuration, change the title, select the correct template and adapt the target folder. We use the same approach for quickly adding an interaction, starting with a multi-group called new CRM interaction, which we move inside the new CRM entity group, which is a nice feature of quick add, having containers inside of containers. Then we create individual actions for meeting, call and node. In my example, they all use the same template, but of course you can have individual ones for each action. Move these new actions in the interaction group. Back in the settings dialog, we now activate the group and the actions by toggling the flash icon for all of them. Now we move to the hotkeys section in the Obsidian settings. Click into the filter field and type new CRM. Find the line called quick add new CRM entity. Click on the plus icon next to it and assign the keyboard shortcut of your choice. As I mentioned, for me it is Alt and C, like CRM. If we then click out of the settings and use this shortcut, we will see that Obsidian asks us what node we want to create. And if we choose New CRM Interaction, it prompts us further to select a type of interaction. Whatever we choose, Obsidian will use the related template, ask for the node's title, fill the node's front matter and move it into the correct folder. Very fast, very neat. This setup allows us to create a lot of nodes quickly and efficiently. To keep an overview of all this information, we will add a CRM dashboard. Here we will find the most relevant and recent information in a single place. Once it is set up, the dashboard will automatically retrieve this information from our CRM nodes. 
You will recall that we added plugins and CSS snippets in chapter 1 of this video. If you skipped it, you may want to watch it before proceeding. Two of these snippets are related to our dashboard view and structure. The dashboard CSS defines the overall structure, while the dashboard read line length CSS lets us use wide margins if the option readable line length is enabled in the editor settings. We first create a new node. I put it directly in the root folder and call it CRM home. We add two properties to the node's front matter. CSS classes with the value dashboard. This will help to apply the dashboard CSS snippet to this node and tags with the values CRM and home or even dashboard if you prefer. These are not required from a functional point of view but might be useful later. And because I really don't need to see the dashboard properties when I'm in reading view, I also add the value hide properties to the CSS classes field. This utilizes the fourth CSS snippet mentioned earlier. As you can see, we will see the front matter in the source mode, of course, but as soon as we look at the preview mode or reading view, the properties will not be there, which makes the whole thing a bit cleaner. The dashboard CSS takes the markdown elements in our node and applies certain styling to them. For each level one heading, it creates a section. We will create six of these sections. Pipeline. Here we want to see the total and weighted value of our open opportunities per phase. Accounts. For an overview of our active accounts grouped by account type, Remember, we defined customer, partner, and supplier as possible account types. The contact section will show us the 10 most recently modified contacts, contacts with a birthday within the next 30 days, and a list of contacts with whom we have not tracked any interaction at all or for more than 30 days. Opportunities section will list all open opportunities and our 10 most recent wins and losses. Under 10 most recent interactions, we get exactly that, a list of the 10 most recent activities we did with one of our contacts. And last not least, we have the product section where we can see a list of all our active and inactive products. Each of these sections is set up to hold up to three columns of information. We can add columns by entering bullet lists. For the pipeline section, I add qualify slash analyze, proposed and negotiating. Under accounts, we can add customers, partners and suppliers. In the contact section, we want to have 10 most recent birthdays in the next 30 days and 30 plus days without interaction. For opportunities, we prepare columns for open 10 recent wins, and 10 recent losses. And under products, we want only two columns, active and inactive. Now it is time to fill all these columns with their respective content. Of course, we could do this manually, but this would be a nightmare to maintain and make our lives harder rather than easier. And that's not the idea. So we will use DataView.js queries instead. All right, let's look at the pipeline. Our first query will give us the total weighted value of all open opportunities in the qualify or analyze phase. I will paste it here and then we can take a closer look. As you can see, we look for nodes in our CRM slash opportunities folder where the field phase has a value of qualifying or needs analysis. These are two of the phases we defined in our lookup node. Then it takes the field weighted value and sums up the numbers of all matching nodes, returning the formatted result with a label called weighted. The second query in the same column does exactly the same, except that we now sum up the numbers from the field value, not weighted value, still for all the nodes in one of these two phases. And the last query in this column is a simple list of all the opportunities contributing to these numbers. So all the opportunities with the phase qualifying or needs analysis. This is simply for convenience, so we can quickly jump to each of them if we want to. These three queries fill our first pipeline column. We can now copy these queries and simply adapt the conditions. In the proposed column, we can remove one of the phase filters and change the remaining one to look for nodes with a phase value including proposal. We just need to be careful to do this for all three of them. Then we copy the whole block to the negotiating column and change the value proposal to negotiation. And that's it for our pipeline. Moving on to the account section. Similarly to before, we basically use one query here and adapt it for each column. The first one returns a list of all nodes in the folder CRM slash accounts, where the active field is true and the type field contains the word customer. We copy the same block to the next column and replace customer with partner, and then to the last column, replacing customer with supplier. For contacts, things get a bit more sophisticated. First, we use this query to give us a list of the 10 most recently modified nodes in the folder CRM slash contacts 
that are marked as active. The second one looks for nodes in the same folder and checks the date in the birthday field. If it's day, month, uh, within the next 30 days, including the current date, they will be shown in the resulting list. And the last query makes use of the relationship between contacts and interactions. Based on this, it will give us a list of all active contacts with whom we had no interaction for 30 or more days, Forever. By the way, if all this sounds a bit confusing, don't worry. I have a very detailed documentation of all these queries and the whole CRM whole structure on my wiki, the link to which is of course in the description. In the opportunity section, we have a very simple first query, returning all items from the CRM slash opportunities folder where the face field does not include the string closed. So if you remember the list of the defined faces, anything that does not include closed is by definition open. The second query shows us only opportunities where the face field includes the text one and limits the result to 10 items. And the last one in this section does the same thing, but for opportunities that were marked as lost, again, limited to 10 items. To get the 10 most recent interactions, we can use this query. You will notice that its structure is similar to the other ones where we looked for most recent items. Of course, this time we only look for items in the folder CRM slash interactions. And this brings us to our last section, products. Here we have two very simple queries. The first one returns all items from the folder CRM slash products that have the value true in the field active. And of course, the second one does the same, but checks that the active value is false rather than true. As you can see, things are taking shape and we're pretty much done. But there are two more things I suggest adding. Buttons and a bit of prettification, if you like making our nodes look nicer. We can use buttons for triggering pretty much anything inside Obsidian. For our CRM, I want to use them to create new nodes even faster. For this, we use the previously installed buttons plugin combined with the already existing quick add actions. We place the cursor where we want to insert our button, in this case in the account section on our dashboard, right under the section title. Then we open a command palette. Again, for me, this is the hotkey Control and P, search for button and select button maker. In the button model, we enter a name. This is the text that will be visible on the button itself. I will call it add account. As button type, we select command and as command, we look for quick add and choose the new CRM account action. We also add a clear button ID called button account. This will not be visible when you look at the node in reading view, but in the source code and will help to identify the code blocks. Then we can pick our preferred color, I will go with blue, and click insert button. This will add a code block and if you look at the reading view, we can see the newly created button. Clicking on the button triggers the respective quick add action, asking me for a note title and then creating the file based on the correct template in the respective folder and with some front matter fields already filled in. We can repeat the same steps and create buttons for adding opportunities, interactions and products. As mentioned earlier, we can quickly go back to make our nodes look nicer. For example, the account node. Let's open the account template in source mode and reading view side by side and look at the text block with lifetime revenue. Currently, this is just plain text based on four data view JS queries. We can make this look nicer by selecting each code block and its heading in turn, pressing Ctrl and P and using the insert callout command. Then we just define the callout type and Depending on your theme and callout settings, this block will be highlighted. Next, we make sure that our heading is used as the block title by bringing it into the same line as the callout title. Once we have done this, we can see all these blocks aligned vertically, which seems like a waste of space for just a few numbers. And here, the earlier installed MCL multi-column snippet is going to help us. We just select all the previously created callouts, press Ctrl P again, and use the insert callout command once more. We change the callout type from node to multi-column and add the parameter separated with the pipe character, no wrap, to keep them all in a single line. If the callouts exceed your page width, go to Obsidian Settings, Style Settings, Modular, CSS Layout Multi-Column and Multi-Column Callout Settings. Here we can change the value for minimum no wrap sub callout width from the default of 250 to something that makes the callouts fit on our page. I will go with 100. Once we close the settings, we can see that the callouts fit nicely now. I use the same method for arranging business and private contact information in the contact template, and I find it very useful to minimize the need for scrolling. And this is one way to build a CRM in Obsidian. Is it the best way? I don't know. 
but it works for me and it might work for you. You can download a dedicated vault with only these CRM elements that I showed in the video via the link in the description. And while all this has been about a CRM, the same structure can easily be used for other use cases. If you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next videos. Let me know what you think about this, what you're missing or would change. As always, I will be more than happy to read and respond to your comments. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.